Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues and friends. It's a great pleasure to um, to chair this session on clinical innovations. It's going to be an exciting session with many topics. So I'm really thankful for the the vast number of of submissions. So it was really hard to identify the best ones and the best will be present. So it is a great pleasure to introduce my two co-chairs and judges, Professor Anja Zemlik from Switzerland and Professor Nicola Storos from the UK. So the first presentation will be from Trotan Angelo from Austria. Respected chair and judges, respected colleagues, uh, this year, I have the great honor to possibly answer the question if CBCD bone densitometry can predict primary implant stability in augmented sinusites. We know beyond any scientific doubt that primary implant stability determines the long-term success of implant therapy and that biomaterials for guided bone regeneration influence the overall biomechanical quality of regenerated bone. Well, until now, we were only able to determine the primary implant stability directly during the surgery and not pre-surgical. But, as we know from the literature, there was already some uh, experimental and clinical studies that uh, proved that the CT-based bone densitometry significantly correlates with intrasurgical implant stability measurement in native bone. So this led my research group to hypothesize that maybe pre-surgical CBCD-based bone densitometry might significantly correlate with intrasurgical insertion torque values, not only in native maxillary bone, but also augmented sinus lift sites after the healing is completed, when different bone graft materials are used. To establish this study, we uh, initiated a randomized controlled clinical trial between September 2017 and March of this year. The study group comprised of 101 patients with 114 sinus lift sites where we inserted the implants after an average of 8.4 months when the uh, bone regeneration um, is supposed to com be completed according to the current literature. 27 patients with 27 implant sites served as a control group, presenting sufficient sub volume of at least 6 mm alveolar crest width and 12 mm sub alveolar crest height. The study group itself was uh, distributed into four subgroups and each subgroup was uh, randomly received randomly allocated biomaterials, a biphasic self-hardening bone graft, a monophasic self-hardening bone graft, a nanocrystalline hydroxyapatite and silica dioxide gel matrix, and granulate bed cow bone. In each case, we inserted one standardized implant, which was a self cutting tapered design implant with a diameter of 4 millimeters and 12 millimeter length, not to bias the results. The parameters we were acquiring were calibrated CPCD based bone densitometry in Hounsfield values, and the insertion torque values was measured with micromotors in Newton centimeters in one Newton centimeter steps. The sinus lead procedure we chose for this study was the atraumatic transgressal hydrodynamic ultrasonic <coughs> gravitational sinus lift, it's a long word, so I will just call it shortly Inclarif, which was developed by my research group already some 10 years ago, and which was presented two years ago at the EAO Congress in Madrid. The intralift procedure consists of a first step where we just open, after opening a minimal invasive uh, booklet flap, opening of the sinus floor with a piezotone diamond coated tooltip. In the next step, the sinus membrane is detached via hydrodynamic uh, force and, um, and ultrasonic waves. 
After this is done, the bone wrap material is plugged into the subantral scaffold. In our study, we used, in every case, exactly two cubic centimeters of the bone wrap material. And after a healing period of average 8.4 months, we measured the insertion torque value directly at the uh, um, insertion of the implant, exactly at the spot where we performed the intralift procedure. To give you a clinical impression how this intralift works, you see the transcrestal approach is sealed with the TKW5 tip that uh, transports the hydrodynamic pressure and the ultrasonic waves to the sinus membrane. And here in the endoscopic view from inside uh, the sinus of the patient, you can see how the detachment and the filling with the bone graft works. It's the, let's say, currently the most atraumatic way which will not bias the results because what we want to measure is the bone regeneration and this should never be biased by some complications during surgery. Um, immediately before we inserted the implants, both in the study groups but also in the uh, group uh, presenting native bone, we investigated the bone density exactly at the spot where the implant was inserted and of course, this is a calibrated procedure. We get number values, but for easier uh, interpretation of the results, of course, we also have a color scheme coding. That means the more light green the, uh, the densitometry imposes on the CBCT pictures, the more dense, in this case, the compound of natural regenerated bone with um, granulate or self-hardening by material impones onto these pictures. Contrary, if we take a look at a situation of the control group, the less greenish and the more reddish the uh, translation of the number values is, the less dense the bone is. So this gives the clinician a very good overview on the first side how the bone quality in the prospective implant site will be. Now let's get to the results. We enrolled 166 patients. We had to exclude 29 patients due to not meeting the inclusion criteria or decline to participate because we had a lot of split mouth cases in these groups and other reasons because <clears throat> when the patient showed up for surgery and presented a cold or chronic sinusitis, then, of course, we had to exclude them from the study, not to bias the results. The rest of the 137 patients were separated into the control group, where we did not lose one single patient for analysis at the end, but we lost two, uh, six patients with seven intralift sites due to sinus membrane, membrane perforation during the intralift procedure. Of course, intralift is the most safe method according to the current literature, but it is still the risk of a perforation. And we know that perforation might influence the bone regeneration, so we had to exclude these patients. In the follow-up period, we had to, uh, we lost another one patient with two sinus lift sites because the patient showed up only after eight months after the healing period ended, so this would have also biased the results and <clears throat> Two patients with three sinus lift sites had their implants inserted at other locations because they were cheaper there, so we couldn't include them uh, for the insertion toward measurement. So at the end, we analyzed 101 patients with 114 sites. So when we speak about the correlation between the insertion toward value and the calibrated Hounsfield values of uh, bone density, we see that within each group, there is no significant correlation between the insertion torque value and the Hounsfield values, which means, except one group, the group, we call it the nanobone group because it's the, the, uh, the drugs, nanocrystalline hydroxy appetite, that means that if you measure 500 Hounsfield in the pre-surgical CBCD, you cannot correlate a precise insertion torque value, like for instance uh, 25 or 26 newton centimeters. So inside each, inside each group there was no significant correlation, but 
The story is now completely different, and this is much more important for the tradition. The ITB and Hounsfield unit correlation between all groups was highly significant, and this is what counts for the clinician. When we take a look at the separate measurements, here you can see the graphic with the calibrated Hounsfield values. You see there is a significant difference between each group. The control group with normal bone, of course, always in the maxillary um, bone presenting the lowest bone density. I added some depiction uh, cases of the uh, single study groups just to give you an idea how on the first look it will look to you when you um, check one of your patients in your own clinic. You see bright light green that means very very high bone density and here in the control group as I showed you before, more reddish, that means very low bone density. And this correlated very nicely with the insertion torque values. And when we take a look at the cumulative results, you can see a significant difference between each group and a widespread um, correlation between Hartsville values and the insertion torque values within each group. So what does this mean for the Practitioner, what is the clinical implication of our study? First of all, we can now suggest that CPCT bone densitometry can safely and accurately predict degree of primary instability of implants in augmented sinus lift sites, non-invasively already before surgery. Second, CPCT bone densitometry non-invasively reveals significant differences of biomechanical bone quality outcome between different biomaterials we use for sinus lifting, which of course is also of interest to further research. And for the general practitioner and for the implantologist in his own office, CBCD bone densitometry might be a reliable tool to predict long-term success rate of implant therapy and might serve as non-invasive tool for pre-surgical decision making whether immediate or delayed implant loading should be preferred. And I just can remind you to this brilliant lecture this morning with Professor Kamaresh, who demonstrated to you what it means to do immediate loading in the upper jaw, in the maxillary bone, with a higher loss rate than when it, it's compared. Can we come to it now? Yes. Yeah. Thank you.